No, buddy. This is not the right country for you. You're not safe here. Yeah, so just got off a call with Nadia. Nadia has arrived in Barcelona. I uh, brought her to uh, Lyon airport yesterday. And she's at work. Um, a, bit, a bit sad, you know, I'm alone here. But that's the way we planned it and that's the way it, uh, it's gotta go. I got, uh, I got two months to finish this house. Uh, we'll see, huh? Um, yeah, it's also been almost a week that we uh, installed this uh, b concrete floor. Tomorrow it'll be one week old. Uh, I've been just too busy to do other work in the meantime. Today, today we're gonna take out the old red door. On the inside it's not red, it's that door. Um, why? Because we don't want to have a door there. There's no need for it and it just takes up space. But, as we do not have permission, as of yet, to do anything on the exterior of the house, we are going to keep the door. The difference is going to be that I'm going to close up the hole and screw the door on the new wall that will be in the place. So it will be a fake door. The door will remain and the door will sort of be in the same position but it won't be a door anymore i think we've got about nine honeybees in the small house now i thought we were rid of them but we got about nine maybe they've hatched i don't know wow i'm gonna fill up that hole today this is uh, this is crazy now Good morning, my dear YouTube friends. Uh, today, another day. Today we're gonna make some progress, at least some visible progress. We've been making progress every day, but it's not tangible, not always. And during the time that Nadia was here before she started working uh, on her new yacht yesterday, uh, we spent a lot of time organizing things and uh, getting the lay of the land, uh, getting quotes, seeing possibilities, a lot of paperwork, a lot of uh, work on the email, a lot of running around, driving around, sourcing products. Um, but now uh, uh, Nadia is away. My French is very limited, so we. Uh, we basically planned it like Nadia was going to help me with the initial setup and uh, now that she's away and I'm here I will be uh, doing the grunt of the work so there's actually a point where I was really looking forward to not to miss Nadia obviously but to uh, to really make some long uh, effective days where you really see a difference at the end of the day makes me sleep well at night
what I did was, as you can see, those cinder blocks, they are 15 centimeter deep, 50 centimeter wide, and 20 centimeter high. The wall is 15 centimeter deep, so I chosen these blocks because in, in one block they will you know, fill up the wall, fill up the void with regards to the depth of it. What I've done is the first row, it's, uh, it's set on day one. I made sure that first row uh, was really uh, level, let it cure overnight, and then I started with the second rows. Now, when we have uh, two of these cinder blocks together, I have, what I have done is I have drilled a hole through the bottom of this one and this one. When I cemented them on top of the other ones, I have uh, stuck a rebar pin through the hole. I have dug out, dug out these, these openings here, a little, opened them a little bit up with the grinder and I have placed a U-shaped rebar over them as sort of a tie, tying the two together. Then I have filled this and this hole with concrete, this hole with concrete, and I have filled the edges with concrete on both sides. So, uh, my theory is that with the concrete, the rebar is set, these two are tied together, these blocks are tied on the blocks below them with that rebar sticking through sitting in concrete. I have concreted these to the walls and I have also placed ties, metal ties, from this block into that wall. Fill this one with, with uh, concrete and in some places I have been able to do it with this one as well. It is tied onto hollow building blocks which was a bit more difficult but every second row I have tied at this block, the right hand block, to the wall. To the brick wall I must say. And I've done that with basically every row sticking rebar through, filling the hole, the void with concrete, filling this hole with concrete and every second row tying this block to the wall, filling that hole with concrete. So what I've done is I've dug it out, remove loose bricks and loose stones. Then I added an extra layer of this, uh, this foam, just because I want to create an expansion joint between the concrete of the little house and the threshold. Then I put a plank here to stop the concrete from flowing, overflowing. I uh, lined with plastic. I, I just used garbage bags. The reason why you line it with plastic is because you don't want all the moisture from the concrete to uh, be sucked up into the earth below, leaving the concrete too dry. I put in some uh, rebar reinforcements because these sides will also be poured concrete. So then I have something to tie into. Yeah, let's, uh, let's get started. Yeah, I don't know whether you have been following this bumblebee saga here. So we, we deposited the concrete and then we went away for a few days. What happened? Yeah, I expected them to move out. No, they did not move out. One day later I came here and there were about 12 bumblebees. So probably uh, these eggs that were in the wall they've hatched. And uh, I thought that this is enough. Uh, just after doing the concrete, I decided, I uh, let's carry on a little bit and fill up those uh, those holes in this wall, including the nest of the bumblebees. Now have a look. Good morning my YouTube friends. 
Tuesday today. The last day I worked here was uh, last Saturday, finishing, uh, closing off the, that uh, the door opening of the small house, uh, doing the top layers and uh, and the grouting. Uh, Sunday I slept in, I didn't want to work, and then I uh, drove uh, with the car to uh, Lyon where on Monday yesterday I had my fear of flying course in uh, the flight simulator. This was a birthday present Nadia gave me. Maybe you remember from previous episodes. Uh, yeah, I spent the whole day in the flight simulator doing some theory and all. That was really good. Maybe I'll uh, show you a little bit later about that. So what did we do? We landed in Charles de Gaulle. We landed in Charles de Gaulle with a big, big, big shot of rain. Yeah. With a lot of clouds, like almost fog. One engine on fire. One engine on fire, which is hopefully not many more than fire. But we got any autopilot. No, so autopilot. We were in Mayday. Yeah, we in Mayday. full Mayday. But you managed to land the airplane with one engine on the runway. And okay, we, we ended up maybe next to the runway later, but it's normal. You lost one engine. And would you think that the fire services are waiting for us? Uh, they're just behind us. Sure, yeah. Are you sure they're not on strike? Yeah, yeah, but they're coming. But we did the most important thing. Okay. We survived. We survived. And that's a good thing. And you managed. Good cap. Well done. There we go. Um, today we are back. And today the planning is that we're going to install the outside door on top of the closed off opening. This to remain. This to this to preserve the original look of the building why because we like it but also because we haven't got permission to change it yet um, further i want to pour concrete around those edges of the door opening now why is that we made a door opening in this wall and those edges uh, need to be uh, tidied up why do I pour concrete? I have been thinking about this long and hard. This building, the older buildings, the big house and the middle house, are built of natural stone, which is cemented together with a lime-based mortar. This is how they used to build houses in France and also the UK. Um, this lime-based mortar has benefits and it has its downsides. When you glue two stones or bricks together with a Portland cement based mortar, Portland cement is the gray stuff we all know, then that's like cemented forever. When you break down a wall, the bricks are still stuck together. That's a chemical a bonding process. They are almost fused together. Now with a lime based mortar, that's not the case. This lime-based mortar, I can, I can scrape it out with a screwdriver from between uh, the stones. I'm not an expert in this field, but what I believe is that the walls are actually built from rocks, stones, on top of each other, right? Like every one is. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to stop you there, buddy. The um, what I'm really right trying to say is that once you make a weak spot in an existing structure, you got to counterbalance that so with reinforcements. That they stay upright. The mortar, you, the you're still talking. In between the stones, Serious, dude. To fill up holes is to fill up cracks, to, fill up to void fill. spaces. Maybe it has some kind of gluing function. Another thing I have to tell you, the bloody bumblebees, eh? I keep filling up all those voids in this area, but as you can see, there's, there's just... See that round hole there? They have dug that round hole. They have dug that round hole in wet cement. There's no winning from these guys. There's really no winning from these guys. And the thing is, when I fill this hole up, they will find another hole. Because this whole wall, you know, there's holes everywhere. 
so I'm I'm pretty desperate. Um, now the thing is, I, I really I really don't want to kill them because what's the point of killing an animal just because it's in my house, you know? Not necessarily opposed to killing animals, but if you're not going to eat them or use the skin <laughs> for shoes, then what's what's the point? So I've been advised to just spray some, uh, uh, I don't know, deterrent uh, poison in the air, gently, uh, just to give them a warning that uh, the area is not uh, not so safe anymore. I don't want to start filling the holes with poison and all. Uh, it's really not nice. It's awful. I just want them to leave. I, I, I don't want to kill them. I just want them to leave. So, uh, they really like the small house. I like it too. You know, we got, we got things in common. But, uh, no, it's time for them to leave. Before I leave today, I will just uh, spray stuff in here. And then uh, tomorrow or the day after, we'll see. And... Uh, yeah, we just uh, let's just take it from there. All right, now I gotta go to work. Talk to you later. Good morning everyone. One of the first things I do when I wake up is uh, check my emails but also check uh, what's happened on YouTube. And I see that uh, I've got a new subscriber this morning, two actually. And uh, in the little uh, analytics program that comes with the YouTube program I use to publish, I can also see where the su subscribers are from, where you guys are from, and uh, I see that the majority of the subscribers and also the people watching this channel are from the UK. I can see that you're in the age group of 35 to 44. Uh, the gender 66.7% is male, 33.3% is female. So knowing this is, is actually quite useful for me because I could tailor the content a little bit more to what you need or what you want to see. Maybe I should be a bit more aware of uh, things like measurements. I should uh, give imperial measurements instead of metric. Probably both. Yeah, maybe there are other things that uh, you would like to know, would like me to include. Uh, let me know. Let me know in the comments uh, what you want to see, what you like, what you don't like. I've been running this channel now for one month exactly. We've got uh, 38 subscribers. Uh, subscribing to the channel helps me because I, first of all, I feel appreciated. It's quite a lot of work doing these videos. Uh, editing is uh, 
approximately 14 hours per episode divided over two or three days and filming itself takes a lot because it's a constant disturbance to the work that I'm actually doing I mean if I was doing the same job every day um, it would be a lot easier because uh, you go to sort of into an automatic pilot and uh, and you can play around with the camera with angles with light uh, with sound um, but I'm doing new things every single day and um, many of those things I don't master I have to figure out on the spot a little bit of preparation and a little bit of thinking and planning but on the spot I have to solve problems and that takes up a lot of my energy because in the end I want to have this house finished so filming it at the same time is is like a two-person job yeah it's it's not that easy it, it, it takes quite a lot so yeah if you subscribe to the to the channel it shows me that you appreciate it it also shows me where you're from, uh, your gender, what you like. I don't know what other information it gives me. No privacy information. Just general statistics. Just drop me a comment and, and, and let me know what you want to hear, what you want to see, what you want me to do. And uh, we'll take it from there. Two meter, this uh, mil two centimeter. Wait, this one. So, uh, the concrete has been curing for almost 48 hours now and I'm going to uh, take off uh, the wood boxing, if you call it like that. Um, yeah, curious to see uh, how it did go. I have poured it in two, uh, in two parts, uh, the first part approximately to here and then uh, I saw the wood bulging and I don't know exactly how strong my construction was so I was quite hesitant to uh, to continue pouring and then uh, there was a leak the side sprung a leak uh, stupidity uh, under there uh, pure stupidity because uh, the wood just didn't really uh, touch the wall um yeah so uh, for the time being I, I supported it with bags of concrete of course i put some uh, paper in between so that the bags of concrete don't get humid and start to cure um but yeah that stopped uh, that stopped the leak largely um then i let it cure and then i uh, filled up the first little batch small batch with a uh, quite a dry concrete because i wanted to plug the hole so to speak and uh, i continued filling up uh, with a more liquid uh, concrete i put uh, i did not show that before but i put the rebars in they are connected with the rebars down below so uh, it all is sort of a a ring a closed ring there's rebar in the floor coming up it's connected to the rebar in the port concrete and that sits in the lento so it is one strong ring uh, yeah <laughs> same as uh, this door here it's probably uh, strongest parts of the house I don't know whether they will last longer than the rest of the house but that's a whole different thing. 
So, we're going to uh, take off this boxing. Move the boxing to the opposite side. Um, possibly fill today, for concrete today, uh, possibly tomorrow. It really uh, depends on how the board closes off with the wall. I might have to use some uh, old uh, some old corking that I have laying around that is uh, possibly expired. I have old corking laying around. It's not it's not cheap, so I'm not throwing it away. But I'm not going to use it for the intention what it was made for, just because it's old and it has been in freezing weather and. Uh, I, I just don't know the quality about it, I can't guarantee it, so uh, I will just use that for these kinds of jobs, sealing off the edges with the wood where it touches the stone in order to uh, stop, prevent the concrete from seeping out. Not bad. Not bad. No, not bad. Not bad, it needs tidying up. But that's that's alright. And I want to grind these edges uh, smooth. Because uh, this is just too sharp. It's, it's not a new build. <coughs> it's a restoration project. But... Uh, encapsulated all these loose stones yeah so I, I for, as a mold uh, release I used this uh, thick paper it's um, very smooth and obviously it doesn't it doesn't really stick to mortar and concrete so uh, that has worked out well because I want to reuse those uh, those wooden plates. This uh, Makita 18 volt caulking gun is the best purchase I've ever made. Most likely the best purchase. <laughs> Makes everything so easy and really consistent. You can uh, you don't get these squirts, you know, you can adjust the, the intensity of it coming out. It's just fantastic. It's really, uh, really one of the best purchases. It's one of those things that you think ah, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy this when I have some uh, cash uh, left over you know when I have some spare it's one of those things you don't really plan on buying but bloody hell what is this good I think everybody should have one every professional should have one by the way I'm still open for uh, sponsorship deals uh, Makita Yeah, I filled the whole uh, the whole mold up in one go. 
and I had uh, one problem, only one, <laughs> and that is that it started leaking here on this uh, this edge. And and why? It's very simple because uh, I only had three of the right size uh, impact plugs left, and I used only one on this side. So yeah, the the board wasn't secured higher than say 50 centimeters above the floor and it, uh, it it came came loose the corking didn't glue yeah wasn't to be sus sus expected but yeah it came pouring out and uh, just quickly put up this uh, this pole secured it with uh, two nails in the ceiling beam cut a bit of OSB plate size and uh, wedged it in between and that uh, did the job I'm flying a plane by myself I don't know what to do